start this morning, aren't we? Well, uh, hey, let's stand together as we open our hearts to the Lord, as we prepare to sing, to worship, to rest in His presence and be reminded of His goodness. Let's take some time now to share the peace of the Lord and greet those around you. Don't let anyone be a stranger.
gather back together as we continue in worship. Father, those 
are tools of the enemy and they have no place in our lives today or tomorrow or the next. Father, you are faithful. Your word tells us that even though we aren't faithful, you are faithful because you cannot deny yourself. You are faithful even though we are not. And we sing of that. Let's sing faithful. Faithful you are. Faithful forever you will be. Faithful you are. All your promises are guessing
us, never forsakes us, always chases after us, always encourages us, always leads us in righteousness and peace. Father, may we walk in that grace today. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated, everyone. All right, kiddos, come on up. Okay, there you are. All right, I have a question. I love to ask questions. You guys know that? I do. I like asking you guys questions. Okay, who here is brave? Raise your hand. You would consider yourself brave. All right, who here likes to let somebody else go first? Good, so we have some smart, brave kids up here. Really good. Okay, now let me ask you another question. What if it was all up to you, and if you spoke to someone and just going to speak to them was very dangerous, you might even die if you went to talk to them, but if you didn't go then a whole bunch of people would lose their lives. Who would go and talk to that guy even though it meant maybe you might not live? Scary, right? That's a scary thing to think about. I'm going to tell you a story about that very thing. There is a young lady in the Old Testament named Esther. And Esther was a very pretty girl, and she was selected to go and meet the king. And in those days, nobody got to see the king unless the king said, you can come in. And there was a really wicked man that worked for the king, and he didn't like the Jewish people. And so he told the king, you know what, king? We need to get rid of these people because they don't worship you. And, and, and you need to sign a decree. And everyone has to worship you. And they wouldn't do it. And so he said, and if they don't do it, we're going to take him out on this very day. And so that young girl was called upon and she went to see her uncle named Mordecai. And Mordecai said to her, sweetheart, I need you to go in and talk to the king. 
because Haman is planning something terrible. And, and she said, but I can't. If I go, I, I could die. He might kill me if I don't have permission to go and see him. And he said, Esther, you were born for such a time as this. You have to go and see the king. You have to be brave for your people. And guess what? She was brave. And all of the Jewish people were saved because she chose to trust in the Lord and believe that he would take care of her, even going in to see the king without permission. Sometimes you and I have to be brave to do the right thing, don't we? So let's ask the Lord to help us to be brave and to always do the right thing, okay? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, help us all to be brave. To be brave not in the kind of way that we wrestle bears, but that we choose to follow your example and to do as you say. Jesus, we love you and we want to follow you and we want to know you better every day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's do some mission work. If you're visiting with us, you can grab a bucket. People will put change in it, and you can bring it back around again. the offering. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. get you one. There you go. And then kiddos can head on back to Kids Church if you're between four and nine. Got a few announcements for you, and Kiffin, I'm going to need you to click through. I'm, I'm not sure if this one will let me yet. 
Okay, um, so this is our already our second week of September. So, uh, ladies, your monthly devotional is this week. So at 9 a.m. on Tuesday, please don't miss it. Have an opportunity to come downstairs for great fellowship with the gals. And um, guys, we have our breakfast happening this weekend as well on Saturday at Classics at 9 a.m. It's a wonderful time of fellowship and time to be in the Word and encourage one another as men. So you're welcome to be there. Also, there is a new ministry opportunity. A prayer chain has started. Our children's ministry director, Nikki uh, LeClaire, is in charge of that. So if you haven't met Nikki, make sure that you get down to the kids' wing. She's probably either down there. She, of course, she is right now. But, um, and then you might see her at the end. But get with her, and she will get you hooked up on this prayer chain. It's important for us to pray for one another. Uh, also, in regard to children, Christmas rehearsal for our, sh our play this year is starting at the end of this month, starting um, September 29th through December 8th from 1130 to 1230. So it's right after church and moms and dads, the meals are going to be provided and you get to sign up to tell us how you want to help. If you'll go back one, son, we've got, um, there's a QR code on the back here and we're going to put that slide up on that back TV and, um, and you'll be able to to click on that and show how you want to help. So it's a really great way to do that. Okay, let's uh, keep going. The fun run is happening. We're just a couple weeks away uh, from the color run. And, um, and you can still uh, sign up to run or to help. It's $25. And it all goes to Strong Tower Haiti for uh, their cause over at the orphanage. So please come and enjoy a wonderful day. And... Um, and, and there might be extra t-shirts. The last day to guarantee a shirt in your size, anyway, was uh, Friday. The kickin' chicken dinner is coming up. I, I, I was at the fair last night on the broad, the main street, and somebody said, hey, when's that chicken dinner coming up again? And I was like, well, you're in luck. It's next month. So the first Sunday of October, and that's something you can set your clock by. If you're visiting with us, we always do it in October, and we always do it in May, right? March, March. I knew it was the M one, but I wasn't 50%. I was close. Anyway, okay, Trunk or Treat is coming up as well at the end of October. So we'll be taking candy donations, and um, it's just going to be a wonderful time. We love, we all uh, participate and dress up and, and uh, hand out candy and um, God's love to the children that come through our neighborhood and make hot dogs and hot chocolate and spend time together downstairs in the fellowship hall. So don't miss that wonderful fellowship opportunity. Um, speaking of Queen Esther... Um, we have a activities team that's starting, and, and Kirsty, I've asked her to help me with that. And we um, managed to grab one of the last showings of Queen Esther uh, for the season. And it's, I know that it's really short notice, guys, and we're sorry about that. But um, in a few weeks, October 5th, Saturday morning, we're going to leave from here. We're going to do the matinee, and, um, and we're, we're trying to reserve a bus. So the more of us who come the better, and I really wanted to do that so that we would all have a, a way to go and come back. We don't have to worry about driving. We don't have to worry about any of that stuff at all taken care of, and we'll stop for a meal on the way back, and, um, and it'll just be a wonderful day of fellowship. So if you are wanting to go and see Queen Esther, please come and see Kirstie. Kirstie, will you raise your hand? Kirstie's your point of contact, okay? Or you can see me. You can even see Courtney in the back, or um, yeah, see one of us three. And we will uh, get you set up in that. Okay. And I think that was my last one. All right. So we have some scripture now. The scripture reference is from the book of Revelations. This is in chapter 3. And we're starting in verse 14 through 22. And this is called the letter to the Laodiceans, the church at Laodicea. And the angel of the Lord of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish that you were cold or hot. So the be then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, I have become wealthy, and I have need of nothing. 
and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And, the, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Thank you. So we have been in a series entitled When Pigs Fly, and we are talking about miracles. And, and we spoke last week about the miracle of deliverance. And as the week went on, I kept feeling drawn more and more to the book of Revelation because it is a book that a lot of people are afraid to read. Uh, it, it's a book that is extremely confusing because it is written in a code that we don't have and don't understand, but it also provides some very, very tangible instruction for us as the church, as his people. And I took us to the Laodicean church because the Laodicean church thought they had everything they needed. They did good as a church. They served. They grew. But then something changed. Jesus is revealing to the church that it has problems. And there's seven letters, and each of the church is different. And if we read all seven of them today, we would identify as each one of them, probably. And today, we look at the lukewarm church, because the lukewarm church is all around us. A lot of us have trusted in a prayer that we said when we were younger, and then we've moved on in life, and that was where we left it. It just kind of stayed there, marinating in the ether of your experience. But there never came that one-on-one -on -one relationship that Jesus is speaking about right here to this church. He says, open the door. I'm standing there. Hello, church. Can I come in? Can I please be in charge again? Will you model yourself after me or are you going to model yourself after your wants your likes your hopes it was really really something that this week I read a, a lot of what John Wesley did in his early ministry and it was amazing to read from his sermons he was he spent almost 15 years in the ministry before he came to Christ. Isn't that amazing? 15 years in the ministry before you actually became a believer. You were born again. And it, and it just goes to show us that we have to be really careful with our confessions. Because we can say one thing and absolutely live another. To be a preacher filled halls, but never knew the Lord, he ended up finding himself on a boat that was in trouble, and he was scared for his life. 
He was so worried about what was going to happen to him as he sits with these German believers who are singing hymns and, and, and just loving God in the middle of this storm. And he realized, I don't, I don't have that assurance that you guys have. I'm missing something. And so he searched and he searched and he searched and he searched for this thing and, and had this wonderful conversation. And, and this German pastor asked him a question. He said, do you know yourself? Do you even know you? You're trying to talk about the Lord, but do you even know yourself? And John Wesley said, yeah, I do. But then he said in his journal, I, I'm pretty sure that I was lying to myself. Because I wouldn't have this much trouble. I wouldn't be so uncertain. If the Bible says that Jesus is for us and nothing can be against us, then is that true or is it not true? It's got to be true. It's got to be true. And this church has forgotten that. This church has forgotten that. Laodicea is in a landlocked area, and so they had to pipe water in from the other regions. And by the time it got to Laodicea, it, it would get thick and sludgy, and it was nasty. Anybody ever been really thirsty and grabbed a cup out of your cup holder in your car and forgot how long it was there, and it's just, it just hot or warm water? It's not refreshing. It's not the best. And so... Here, this town that is incredibly wealthy because of its commerce doesn't have a good water source. And so Jesus brings that to the forefront and he compares them to that. You're neither hot nor cold. Someone has once said that about me. I've never seen you in the middle. You're either hot or you're cold. That was very, very encouraging for me, but... At the same time, I was like, I don't know. I kind of feel like I'm in a cold season right now, and it's that obvious. <laughs> oh, man. So when Jesus speaks, he speaks with a little bit of sarcasm here. In verse 17, he says, because you say, I am rich, I have become wealthy. I have no need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Friends, that is the human's disposition without Christ. It doesn't matter what we know. It doesn't matter what we have. Some of us spend our whole life trying to accrue enough to have everything we want. And that's our focus. It's all financial it's all about security. Some of us focus on image. It's all about what other people see about me. It doesn't really matter who I am on the inside. It's as long as I look good on the outside. That was the Laodicean church. They did everything right, but their heart was far from God. Didn't want anything to do with what he really wanted. They're out there gaining the world. And he said, I counsel you to buy gold from me. If you want something that's worth something, come and get it from Jesus. He says, buy from me gold refined with fire. White garments that you may be clothed. Isn't that our biggest fear? being seen, being naked before the world. Nobody wants that. Jesus is trying to say, that's how you're going to end up if you don't come to me. You will be exposed. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. God is always giving his people encouragement to come back wholeheartedly. Get zealous for God again. Some of us have cooled off. A pastor came and visited one of his parishioners, and he hadn't been to church in years. But, but he sent his checks, and every once in a while there would be a tithe check coming in. But the pastor went out, and he sat with him, 
and they were and he was sitting out by a fire in the on the in the backyard and 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 they just sat there silently and he and the pastor grabbed a stick and he he pulled a coal away from the fire and as they sat and talked eventually that coal went out and it turned black again it lost all of its heat and as soon as it lost all of its heat the pastor grabbed the stick again and he pushed that coal back over to the fire and within moments it lit back up again and it was a roaring flame and he said do you understand he asked the man do you understand so many of us try to live Christian life on the outside all alone we just go for it lone ranger Christianity we call it I don't need to be around people I don't trust organized religion because they've got it wrong well, I'm sure that there's things that we're probably doing wrong, but I don't think that they're sacrilegious or heretical. So that's a good thing. Everybody makes mistakes, but sometimes in church, we allow that to hurt us so much that we just turn away from church completely. And when someone says, hey, why don't you come to church? Let's, let's get back into church. You'll get the when pigs fly, I'll come back to church. Friends, that's not a real thing. We make it a thing. We call it church hurt. But it's just people. It's just people hurt. If you got a bad deal at the gas station, are you not going to go back to the gas station? You got gas station hurt because it was too high? You know? No. So, Jesus is saying, make sure that you really are rich. Don't, Don't think because you have nice stuff and a nice house that you're rich. Jesus said, what good is it if you gain the world and lose your soul? The Lord is after our soul. And there's a lot of lukewarm Christians out there. I go to church. I read my Bible from time to time. But it doesn't really get in me. But I read it. No. Without Christ, we are in trouble. We're wretched, we're miserable, we're poor, we're blind, and we're naked. Laodicea was known for its eye salve. So why would they need anything for their eyes? If they had problems with their eyes, they'd just go to the store and get some. You can't buy that kind of sight. Jesus is offering us something different here. finishes off by saying, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Friends, we have to listen because time is getting short. If we go about our Christian walk and it never costs us anything, we might not be walking hard enough. We might not be stretching ourselves past that point of comfort. Jesus doesn't want comfortable Christians. Men and women gave their lives for the sake of the gospel and still do to this day. And Jesus is asking us to be prepared to do the same. Are we prepared to give our life for the gospel? When we give up our life, then we will truly find the riches that he's telling us about here. He's covered our nakedness. He's covered our shame. Provided us with all that we need. It's so good. If you're if you're one of those Christians today that you might say, you know, I'm I'm neither hot nor cold. Then come before the Lord this morning. Repent and get zealous about the work of the gospel. It costs us something, more than just an hour in the morning. Friends, we had an awesome time this week. Throughout the entire week, the church had a little transformation. I don't know if you noticed that or not. But we watched something that was a whole bunch of different pieces become one gigantic, beautiful booth. And it was all because people got together and worked it out. And it was really great. So if if you helped with that, will you stand real quick? 
If you help build that, I know, Brian, you built that thing. Come on, man. If you help mud it down or you help sand it down or you help set it back up, this church was covered in white dust this weekend. And we have wonderful people who help make this happen. And I just wanted to thank you in service. I didn't want to leave you out. Um, but this is amazing. Thank you. Please be seated. When we, when we talk about making changes inside a building, this is when we can hear this expression as well. When pigs fly, are we going to change anything inside of a building, right? But change is coming and change is good. Don't allow yourself to leave here with a lukewarm heart today. I know that we love Jesus. But do we fear God? It's good to love Jesus. But if we forget that He is God Almighty and that He has a holy standard that He's calling all of His people to, we can't quite blow that off. He's calling us to be a church of faithful believers. We're going to turn this all around and we are going to light it up. We have to light this community on fire for the gospel, friends. Because if not, a lot of people that are lukewarm are going to be spewed out and we might have had an opportunity to help somebody come back to that zealot or zealous state where we preach the gospel, come what may. Don't get comfortable in your Christianity. God called us to work this faith. So let's work it in grace together. Let's listen to what he is saying to the church. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. For the gift of this precious word. God, I pray that we would become all that you have for us to be. Thank you that it's happening. Thank you that you are creating for yourself a bride. Dressed in white, free of any stain. Father, show us the way. Fill us with your peace this week as we go. Lead us in your truth. Father, we want to align our hearts with you. Father, for those of us who have just kind of tested the water out, not quite sure if we're ready to jump all in, that there might be something better coming down Father nothing's better than you so Lord I ask that you would light hearts on fire today for you help us to seek you help us to honor your word Father help us to walk in the path that you have set for us and we do that by submitting to you Father hear our prayers we pray the prayer that you, your son taught us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and feed us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, friends, as we prepare to go today, let us go with a song. Let's stand.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, beloved. What's up, buddy? Did you have a good birthday? What'd you... Thank you. Good job, buddy. You did it.